Good morning guys, how are you doing? Today I wanna to talk to you about something that is super important to making sure your business is successful. Yes, I know I was very bright right there, hoping that door open, it's like boom! Yes, we have sun here in Ohio, it has stopped raining, but our lawns are completely flooded as of right now, so we're gonna give them today to recover. But what I was originally talking about guys is five common mistakes that business owners will make that will put them out of business. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So the first mistake that most new business owners make is thinking that running a lawn care landscaping business is simply just mowing and trimming. Guys, I cannot tell you that is the furthest from the truth. Mowing and trimming is part of the business and part of being an owner, I guess you could say, and that is probably the easiest part of the job. But actually running a business efficiently, knowing your numbers so that you're profitable, all of this stuff costs money, guys, all of this stuff. So if you're not recouping your investment and then some, you're not gonna stick around very long. So you might be saying, well, Sean, you know, I've mowed my grass, you know, I trim my grass, I take care of my lawn, it looks really, really good. How do I get professional experience? How do I learn about the business? Well, for one, reading always helps. There's a ton of free knowledge on social medias now. This thing is wide open, guys. I mean, you can literally learn stuff that they were charging folks to go to school for for free on the internet with just putting in a little bit of effort. But the number one thing I recommend to you, if you think you wanna be a lawn care, landscaping, snow removal business owner, is to work for a company for a few years, two, three years, gain as much knowledge as you possibly can, learn as much as you can, tell the business owner. So myself, for an example, if a new employee comes to me and he says, hey, Sean, love to work for your company, but I wanna start my own business in two to three years, Will you teach me as much as you possibly can? Absolutely, I don't have a problem with that. Now I am gonna make them sign a non-compete and that would be smart for any of you as well, but I have nothing here to hide and that's why I run the social media the way I do. I want to teach as many folks out there that you can do this too, with just a little bit of effort, you know, you putting in some hard work, some sweat, you know, probably even a little bit of tears. I've teared myself over the years, but you can do it too, okay? So get working for a reputable company, a company that you wanna be like, that's the thing. So the second biggest mistake that most people make is not knowing how to estimate jobs and what the job is actually worth. So therefore, they cut themselves short, they cut their own throat, they're not profitable, and that hurts. Trust me, I've made those same mistakes. We all do it from time to time, but you have to minimize those mistakes and make sure you're profiting up here. All right, so the next question is gonna be, Sean, well, how do I know what to charge? Nobody's ever taught me, you know, I, I've never worked for somebody. Well. Like I told you already once, you can read some stuff, okay? There's tons of information out there that is absolutely free. It might not be 100% accurate to your location, but it'll at least give you an, a general idea and then you can implement those. And you know, if you're not getting the jobs, you kind of might say, uh, maybe I need to bring it down a little bit. Well, if you're getting every single job, you might say, well, maybe I need to add a little bit more here to be a little bit more profitable. But I'm gonna sit, share a little tool here with you. It's called Google. Hey Google, what does it cost to mow a lawn? Here is information from howmuch.net. So go on howmuch.net and it has it on here. The typical lawn in the United States is generally between starting point of $700 for a season, which is one year technically, to $3,000, okay? So seven to 3,000, that's a big range there, okay? And this is for residential. So you have to do some research here. In Ohio, in my area, we typically mow 28 times a year. That's on the low end, sometimes high end's 32. So 28 services, 32 services. Drought will affect all of that and other circumstances. Kind of like, you know, we've had a ton of rain here lately. So anyways, so what you do, is you take that 700 and you divide it by 28 services, okay? So let's go ahead and do this real quick. 700 divided by 28 mows comes out to $25, okay? So on this, on the internet, the lowest it's saying is $25. Now I get folks all the time saying, I'm charging 15, 18, $22, and I'm like, what are you guys doing? I'll tell you right now, for our business, we never go below 40 bucks. I don't care how small it is. It can be a 10 by 10 squared off area, it's gonna be $40. That's because that's what it takes to cover our overhead, 
our cost for our business. That's why going back to rule number one, knowing what your numbers is, is so important, okay? You have to find out what your numbers is because your numbers are gonna be different than my numbers, okay? And if you're smaller than what we are or bigger, that's really gonna affect the prices. So in my area here in Northeast Ohio, the days of a $25 mowing are absolutely over. There's no way that we can we can mow lawns, no matter the size of them, for $25 unless they're back to back to back to back to back, like a, a, a an HOA or something like that. Then you can make money, but you're there all day. That's why I don't even bid them here. I'll give you an example. Years ago, I bid against a really big company here in my local town. Hello, chicken. The chicken came over to tell you guys what's up. So I bid against them on this HOA. The guy that was in charge of the HOA sent me back their contract and he said, bro, you're not even, even close. Like, are you nuts? Now you have to remember, this is like 2012, 2013 era. The economy really wasn't doing that great. So people were shopping for the cheapest person, the person that would do it for whatever. I'm not kidding you guys. They were mowing these places for $9.12 a piece in this HOA. I was at like $33, okay? Which I thought was still even a little bit low. Yes, they're cookie cutter. Yes, they're back to back to back. But they had beds all the way around them, all the walkways, driveways, everything had to be edged. And that stuff all has to be cleaned up. And I believe there was 44 units there. So at 10 bucks roughly, you're talking $440 a week. Myself, where my business was at that time, that would have taken me all day and at that point it was more profitable for me to go to the lawns that were eighty dollars a hundred dollars and mow seven of those a day and make six seven eight hundred bucks whatever the numbers came out to so that's just an example of how things can be different everywhere mistake number three yeah that's three one two three right <laughs> This one might ruffle some feathers, and if anybody's watching this that I've done work for, and you may be a uh, blood relative to me, don't take offense to this, okay? But the third mistake that most businesses make starting out is they do a ton of work for family members and friends, and they're afraid to charge them, you know, because they're their friend and they're their family. Or if they're going out and estimating new jobs, you know, they're like, Oh, that's probably too expensive, you know. I, I and they end up just selling themselves short. You know what I'm saying, guys? There has been been plenty of times in the past in my business that a family member would call me, "Hey, Sean, my mower broke down. Hey, Sean, this happened. Can you take care of the lawn, you know, for a month or two till we get our mower back?" And you know, you want to take care of family, and I always take care of my family. So I'm not saying don't do that, okay? I'm just saying don't get taken advantage of by those family members or friends that are just simply using you, okay? And this kind of plays into a life lesson as well. Not everybody's your friend, okay? I saw a TikTok, I don't know, maybe a month ago, and this guy said, watch this, he did this little test, okay? So he put the exact same photo up on his Facebook account in two different spots. So he put it on his normal feed, and then he actually put it into his story where the story would show, show him exactly how many people looked at it. So he put it up, okay? On his normal, just put it up on Facebook, on his normal post, that photo got three likes, okay? So this is a guy that had like 1,300 friends. Gets three likes on his normal Facebook uh, feed, okay? So then he puts that same one into the story, just like you can do on your Instagram if you want to. That same exact photo got viewed by 700 of his friends, family members, yada, 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 and got two hearts on it, okay? So this is just going to show you, not everybody's on your team, guys. And I'm telling you right now, not everybody's willing to go to bat for you like you're willing to go to bat for them. And this is the lesson that I've learned over the years, okay? And I have some very, very crude stories that I could share with you that I choose to keep personal. Uh, I've had best friends, literally, I mean, stab me in the back. I mean, these were people that I would have, if we'd have gotten a fight, I'd have probably went to prison for them. That's how much I cared for them. But they weren't on the same team as I was. They stabbed you in the back. I'm not saying everybody will. There are good people out there. But just using that as an example, guys, in your business, don't allow customers or friends, family to take advantage of you. Because when your mower breaks down, your truck breaks down, your trailer goes down, not saying everybody. Remember, I'm not saying everybody. But a lot of people won't be there to pick you up. Are you growing your health, your mind, your body, your soul? Plenty of people just wanna look good on the outside. 
and plenty of people are absolutely miserable on the inside. You know why? Because they stop growing, they stop trying to learn. And the same thing goes into account for your business. If you're not consistently learning, and I'm not saying you have to read any of these books, but these are just really good books, and we have a ton more books, but uh, never stop learning, guys. Blockbuster, for example. Blockbuster was the creme de la creme, you could say, of the movie industry whenever I was a young kid. Well, you know what happened? Netflix came along. Netflix actually offered to sell themselves to Blockbuster, and Blockbuster laughed at them because they thought they were just way up here. Nobody could touch them. So what's Netflix do? They go back, keep pumping at it, keep pumping at it, and literally run them out of business. Blockbuster went under. I think there's one left in like Oregon or somewhere crazy. Never stop learning, guys. Never be afraid to learn and try new things. And the fifth and final mistake I have for you, not saying these are all of them, these are just the ones that I see most common being in this industry for now going on 10 years and being on social media now for going on seven, eight years roughly. Burnout, guys. Burnout will crush anybody. I don't care who you are. I've dealt with it myself. This year, going straight from snow season, which was absolutely amazing. We made the most amount of money we've ever made in snow removal season. Going straight into lawn care, I needed a break, guys. I'm so glad we went on vacation to Anna Marie Island with everybody at the Hype House. That helped me out mentally so much. I'll be honest with you, I think I needed about another week or two down there because I had been going, 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 going. TQ had been going, 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 and we just needed that mental break from it, okay? And not saying that we fully stepped away from everything. I still put out as much content for you guys as I could, but just taking that mental break and knowing it's okay, because whenever I was growing up, it was work, 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 no play, work, 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 okay? That's what I was taught. And I've had to retrain myself and relearn, and I'm still learning. That's the key part. I'm still learning that it's okay to take a breath, to take a day off. And, you know, nobody is susceptible to just being tired, okay? And that's the number one thing that I see people go through and they don't know how to deal with it. They just keep working, 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 working. And before you know it, they hate what they went into loving. I love lawn care. I love landscaping. I love snow removal. But you do anything all day long, every single day, for a long period of time, it's going to start to not be that fun. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like pizza. Everybody loves pizza. Well, most people do. If you eat pizza every single day for every single meal, how long do you think it's going to take you before you become tired of it? Not very long, right? From a person that literally is a workaholic, I probably sleep maybe four to five hours a night. You don't believe me? You can ask around to any of these other social media people that have been in a house with me for a week. I don't sleep. I work. It's what I do. I feel... I don't feel normal if I'm not working. I'll say it like that. So whenever I'm just sitting idle, making like this content right for you guys, right here, right now for you guys, I'm okay because I feel like I'm being productive. If I'm not being productive, I'm actually miserable. No joke, guys. I actually get miserable. I feel almost as if like you're worthless. You know, you're not doing your part. You know, it's it's kind of like that old saying. You know, a, a stay-at-home dad. You know, a stay-at-home dad is frowned upon because he's looked at as a loser. Even though he could be homeschooling the kids, he could be taking care of the house. It's just not in society's norm, okay, inside the screens here. It's just not the norm. It's normal for the mom to stay at home and take care of the kids and clean the house and the dishes. This is, this is 2021, guys. Life like that is kind of over. Women are far more empowered. Like TQ, she inspires hundreds of women a year to go out, work with their husbands, and just have a great life and enjoy life doing what they want to do, okay? Nobody's saying women have to be cooped up in a box. Now there are people that think that, and they can think what they want. They're entitled to that. But I can also think to what I want, and you can think to what you want. And we can all disagree and still be okay. That's the part, okay? So, yes, guys, burnout will happen. It happens to us all. The thing is, is just remembering what your passion is and why you started it and what you're doing it for. I'll tell you right now, everything I do is for my family. This is not for me. You guys, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> most days, if you looked at me, you'd be like, bro, this dude's a bomb. Like, I don't care about like the fashionable, fashionable type things and all that stuff. You know, is it nice to have? Yes, it is. But I grew up dirt poor, guys. I can remember not having oil in our furnace and having to sit in front of the oven all night long just so we didn't freeze to death. 
And a little bonus for you guys and gals out there. Don't allow people that never chased their dreams to talk you out of chasing your dreams. Anything that you want to do, you can 100% do. Don't allow somebody that just sits on the couch every single day and mope and grinds and this and that. Life's never going to get better. This is why I'm in this situation. Get away from those people. Get after your goals. You can do it.